like most farmers, coffee producers have some challenges to face, not the least of which is diseased plants. One of the most common and problematic diseases is called coffee rust or coffee leaf rust. We're gonna talk a little bit about that today. Hey everyone, I'm Eric, this is The Mug Life. I didn't choose The Mug Life, The Mug Life chose me. Around uh, 2012, there was a lot of talk in the coffee world about leaf rust or La Roya as it's known in Spanish speaking countries. Mostly this was in Central and South America. Lots of farms were completely devastated and a lot of coffee trees had to be destroyed. Uh, this leaf rust or coffee leaf rust or La Roya is a fungus that is scientifically known as Something I can't pronounce, but we're going to put right there. Uh, somebody I'm sure can mention that in the comments. It's been around coffee growing areas in Africa, India, and Asia for a very long time. In fact, uh, there was an outbreak of coffee rust in 1892 that completely destroyed coffee crops in Sri Lanka and Java. Uh, and in 1970, it was first uh, found in Brazil. That was the first time in, that it was found in the Western Hemisphere. Coffee rust, it's a small yellowish oily spot on the bottom of the leaf. Uh, those spots expand and eventually cause the leaf to die. And once the leaf dies, the plant can't photosynthesize light into energy, so it doesn't produce any fruit. And because it does such extensive damage to the fruit, many farmers will lose two or even more crop cycles. Uh, unfortunately as well, uh, the spores of the coffee rust fungus are very light and they spread from tree to tree uh, on wind or in water or even on workers clothes and tools. There's a couple of ways that farmers can kind of mitigate the effects of coffee rust. One way during the rainy season, you can apply a fungicide. Unfortunately, for a lot of smaller farmers, that's yet another cost and might not necessarily be a viable option. Uh, second option, it seems like the, the fungus is a little less uh, likely to spread at higher elevations, like six or 7,000 feet above sea level. <laughs> but if your farm is already lower than that, picking it up and just moving it isn't exactly a solution either. Uh, also, certain varietals of coffee, particularly Robusta, uh, can be very resistant to leaf rust, but Robusta generally isn't uh, a higher quality coffee, so a lot of farmers don't have a market to sell that. Uh, there's a hybrid that was developed called Limperia, but that, that was supposed to be resistant, and it largely was, uh, until about 2017, they planted a lot of Lumperia in Honduras, uh, but then in 2017, for some reason, it just stopped being resistant and a, an awful lot of trees in Honduras were lost because of uh, leaf rust. Uh, as of today, there is not a varietal of coffee that is completely resistant uh, to leaf rust at all. So. Uh, some of the more practical solutions include uh, just spacing trees further apart so that the leaves don't stay as moist and that fungus doesn't propagate. Uh, nutrition and fertilization are absolutely essential. Proper pruning can really help. Uh, too much shade in a coffee farm can also cause the trees and the leaves to uh, keep be moist all the time and that causes the fungus to grow as well. Uh, bottom line, it is essential that coffee producers learn and understand how they can manage coffee rust and other diseases and what kind of controls they can implement on their farms. Coffee rust, unfortunately, is never going to go away completely. It's always going to be a problem. Uh, the bottom line, it is essential that coffee producers learn and understand how they can manage coffee rust and other diseases as well, and what kind of controls they can implement on their farms. This is why providing education to farmers and producers is so absolutely essential for continuing quality coffee production. 
Thanks for listening to that. I hope you learned a little bit about it with me. And as always, keep serving coffee people love.